Eight thirty. Right on the money. Just turned over. It's at eight thirty. Fill up. <clears throat> well, Rose Valley came up with their valuation on the equipment. They got it right. They came up with sixty thousand five hundred dollars. Tractor mower and then on the chip mm -hmm. and the back. Yeah. Yeah. All they could do is go online compare. Mm -hmm. this. The machines work better. I mean, they don't have any actual best software. It's basically. That's what it'll pay off your check with the bank or at least. Well, no, I have checked with the bank and see if you know, one payor or one payor. Because I didn't know if they really didn't have that information. <laughs> well, uh, but I don't know. If you're talking payoff, they might. Mm -hmm. And what are they wanting cash for their tractor and mower? No, I thought, I, I thought we agreed we just do work in their township yeah. and not, you know, and build. And build it out that way. Are they are? Yeah. Because they've got several things that need to be done. They've got a lot of tree trimming that needs to be done. The graders are going to get beat up. And quit the cost too much money to do that. Way too much money to do that to it. So the graders now? It's a year old. It's 2004. Well, two years old, excuse me. It's 2004. It's a cap. M2, The new generation. Well, that's a two for one yeah. <coughs> And so is the truck. So is the truck. So you can have death of those. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion for this? Or what do, you do we need to have Joe draw something up in agreement with Sam? Or probably wouldn't hurt her. Well, I mean, it's just good business on the you know, but it just protects everybody, I would think. I would agree. Yeah. And then they would, uh, the bill down and it would go against. Well, just the tractor and mower the chipper. The yeah. grader would have paid. The yeah, grader yeah. Just yeah. Take, take it over the payments, basically. But yeah, I mean, we, well, we got a lot of work to do. Probably take a matter of two, maybe three years at the most of it to get that. And it would be $83,000. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can deal with Rick. Jason will do to find out. That wouldn't be done, like I said. We have to have an equipment fund to do that. We're trying to put it down at the end of the year or so. That wouldn't be done. That wouldn't be done. That wouldn't be done. That wouldn't be done. Would it be time to trade to a bigger one? Well, I'll talk on with Jay. He said probably to do ditch work and stuff when he's next size bigger is what he recommended. Now, I don't know because we haven't had a machine to right. see what we'll do. I mean, it's got a lot of bigger tires and we're on the Something you run for a year and see what, yeah, how you like it. Yeah. I mean, we don't typically do that part right. of it, Jimmy. It was just cleaning out. Right. But yeah, you, you're right. We just in front of the air see how you like it. Well, I don't see what I get for Am I worried? 
Probably go stop it, whatever it is. <laughs> and just just worrying about it. <laughs> it is. Dogs have all They do it out already. What's that? They do it out already. No. In the inch. In the inch. That's what they said this morning. At the annex? At the annex. You're in charge. Uh, Jane is. No, I was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he was the <laughs> You <laughs> pretty quick. I'm waiting for that. He has responsibility. Yes, yeah, he did. His last act. His last act. Are you, de you, are you could, delegating? You could delegate. Are you delegating? <laughs> <laughs> I got the experience. I got the hammer. I delegated last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. They're supposed to be about 65 there, so most of the townships will respond to the executive. Well, Mary has. Second, we approve minutes of January 13. Donald Davis, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Any tax? Yes. Make a motion to accept the tax reparations. Second. It's been moved and second. We accept the tax rule correction. Donald Davis, say aye. 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 Motion carried. These are just annual reports of these townships. Yes. Anything else at the moment? I don't want to file. Who, who wrote the notes on here? Okay, so well, we'll read this. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Carl, you just sit over there. <laughs> sit over here. Don't look at each other. <laughs> and then we will recess and reconvene for the uh, public hearing for the zoning revitalization. Oh, okay. Right? Neighborhood revitalization. So now we're convened as the neighborhood revitalization. For the hearing? For the hearing. Yep. Yes. Okay. And we'll wait. Is that publicized a couple times? Mm -hmm. She gave the last one. Okay. Well, we'll give them, yeah, Carl, we'll out. give them five, yeah. five minutes okay. to get the chairs in here. <laughs> okay. Mike, you're going to just do one. Well, as long as that pertains to neighborhood revitalization. Go through the scenario you told me of how they come up with the ag use values six years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Based on eight years ago. Eight. Well, last year would not be in the equation because it, 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 was, it was still, it wasn't, we were still over the year. So it'd be 14 to eight years, go eight years back of that. Okay? So that's your eight year period. And then what the Kansas State Ag and Statistics do is they study the surveys, they study the farming practices, they study, they're the ones that do the study. And then once that study is complete, and they do this every year. Once that's complete, then they give that data then to the property evaluation department. The property evaluation department converts that data to value. How they do that is they take those normal net income type things and they divide it by the cap rate. Because the cap rate sets that value then. The old firm, uh, formula earned income. And then you can draw a line and another slash rate and value. If you know those three, two of those three things, you can figure the other thing. So if they have the income, they already know what the rate is, the cap rate. They can figure the value on all the soil types. So, but 
you know, every system has a disadvantage, and where we're at in our economy right now is the disadvantage for the farmer part because they're 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 feeling the loss of income now. They won't feel that loss of income on their taxes for probably two to three years down the road. The reason I say it could be longer is if you look at 2014 compared with 2005, 14 is still typically better than the year going out. That was a bad year. I remember that. That was pretty bad. That was, I don't know if you remember, you know, but that was bad. That was dry. It's not based on the commodity prices or anything like that. But it's over a long period. And and and, and, and if you if you go, if we go look, I still think we're we even though it's it's worse now than it was a couple of years ago, it's still better than it was back in two thousand and six, seven and eight. This year we had twelve dollars a week. Uh, I mean the recession yeah, was was, one, was a oh hey. Yeah. And so it was still back then, so I would say it probably bounced back and that's probably where the oil was at the highest. Ten months or twelve or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Corn. So you see that's that's gonna be down the road for the for the farmer then. And you and you still have the the state still gonna look at that cap rate and let it come in where it needs to because of the legislation with taking egg market value. People are still fighting, people still want a, a closer correlation between it. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the steps there. And you know, for 2016, when we know our values out this year, um, the, ag, the ag values went up again, about 10, 11 percent. Now, the irrigation is still going to be a little, uh, it's going to be closer because when, when we did this, over the summer, we did that project for the water ratio, where we actually used the last three years of what they used in water. So that really helped too, because they didn't water as much as they did in prior years. We had some pretty good time drain, mm -hmm. and uh, and not to do that portion, but just slap the new use values on people isn't fair, because you'd be having 2016 use values with our old water ratio. And that's not that's not the way to do it, I don't think. So that's why we did that this time. Okay. You think that's a fair way to do it? Use value? Yeah. 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 You know, from from, from doing this and, and you actually doing this in other states and so forth. Yeah. You are gonna get in because you don't really have a, a other good system except for market value. And we don't want that. Uh, market value uh, for starters, where your market minutes. value of your land is, is going to be. So, uh, we adjourn from uh, the, we'll adjourn from the public carrying of the, of the neighborhood revitalization, and then we'll reconvene as commission. So then we have to adopt yeah. the changes. For five years. Yeah. Five. Okay. I make a motion to approve the neighborhood revitalization plan for five years. Uh, uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the neighborhood revitalization for the next five years. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. The, the market value, what's tough is what market value are we going to talk about? You know, the legislature would write in there that it would be market value. Well, are you, can, are you, are you, so now, now we have to appraise it by market value. Okay, now you have, and then we have to go to the Constitution and change that because our classifications for different rates and tax things that is in our Constitution. Ag lands at that 30% is high. If you go to market value, that 30% can't stay there. It would have to come down to five. Residential is 11 and a half percent. But what you can do is offsetting and cost them a lot of money for starters to try to get a different equity part. Another part is fair market value around your house for the land is not the same market value by Maxville. 
it's not the same value by Kilmera for the pasture, it's, then I would have to take in the access. Do I have no access? Do I have dirt road access? Uh, some farmers would come in and say, my access is 15 miles away from my farm. This one's, they're going to take it personal on what it's worth to them. How far am I traveling? Are, you, are we going to go market value at a quarter of ground? Or are we going to go market value at 10 acres of ground? All that's different. You know, where it sits, it, you know, around the cities makes it, you know, because most people aren't going to buy it for farm ground. If I buy 20 acres, I'm not a farmer. I'm just going to use the rest of that land as a you know. But that's market value ag land. It'd be, it, it would be just a disaster. We would have so many appeals, uh, the counties couldn't keep up with it. And that's why I say when I have a hearing with a farmer or with somebody, you know, downgrading the use value system, I said, you better be careful. I said, because it's going to get a whole lot worse if you go a different system. You know, there's, there's, there's no other system that I'm aware of that anybody's created that is more fair than I'm getting taxed for what I'm using the land for. I'm getting taxed by the soil type what kind of soil I have, and the location doesn't matter. I mean, how much fairer? I guess the problem everybody has with it is we're in tough times, yeah. and it's going to take five years to get this commodity price or these times into that formula. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, I that's too far to make a difference. Yeah, too far it, far. But I don't know how you change that to be fair to both the landowner and the government. Mm -hmm. If you want to change, you know, if the commissioners got involved, your association and what have you, I don't think anybody's ever looked at it since reappraisal started in 80, when it was implemented in 85, um, is, is what would this study look like instead of an eight year period, what if it was a four year period? Mm -hmm. And you would see a little bit more of a maybe a roller coaster, but you would feel it quicker. Right. That would be you would have to cut it down. Yeah. That's one reason when, when I do your, the, the dwellings is some counties have to go five and seven years out. Uh, the way the market changes a lot. You know, some counties have enough sales, they use two years. We use three. So three years gives us a good, it doesn't haunt you very long if it's, a, if it's, a, if it's an extremely high year of sales. Um, <laughs> But it, but you vice versa that way. It's, it's a little more steady. So that that might be a good uh, good question. Is can we cut that eight years before or, or something like that? That's what I was. That's a good way to look at yeah, it. That's what I was having a conversation with you mentioned about. I think it's too far back. Okay. I mean, because it seems like by the time the the, the low incomes get got factored into that formula. Either the land value has changed or the land price changes to offset. It. Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, I think you have, I think you actually have a, I mean, a, a good the, thought there. Just kind of, kind of, yeah, a tough one to, This year is going to be just awful. Well, the next two, well, the next two years. Yeah. Because you're still not going to factor in any low commodity prices or incomes into that formula yeah. for another three years. And then you still got to look at that, compare that with the year going out. Right. Uh, if, it's still, uh, if it's still higher or even equal, uh, you're not going to see a decrease. After we get a budget for us and we get nothing from oil and gas, so we're probably going to get here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll have a question that gets on everybody's mind. Carl, how, how low do you think the price of oil is going to stick by the for oh. February? Um, you know, since they set the price this time, probably it'll probably go down some more. Yeah. Uh, because we'll probably have well, a already ten, price. Already 10 bucks under where we were last year. Where we were last year. Okay, go back to this other thing. <laughs> we went to that hearing. I appreciate you telling me about that too. What's that? That the uh, oh, the one here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that was interesting. That was that was well worth the time. 
Well, it just seems like, you know, <clears throat> the people down there have some good points. Mm -hmm. And it's things that I don't think nobody's thought of until it's going to become a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think it's fair <clears throat> for a neighbor to have a 500 foot offset to that wind turbine to have my land area apply. I mean, there's room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, we, we, we got to remember where we're at. Mm -hmm. you know. I didn't think, I didn't, and I asked the question before the meeting, and, and he actually had it in a slide that I didn't know they could do aerial in a way. He says what they request is they, 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 they need their schedule, their turn them off. And then they, that way, that blades are not coming around right. and catching them off guard. But uh, I was actually surprised about that that they could do the aerial in the wind farm. But uh, so they limited, but I mean, you could you could do so. Yeah, there was a good crowd down there. Uh, we're going to pick it up tonight at seven uh, and start from there. Uh, I was impressed with. I, I was on the I was impressed. Uh, they have some experts there. I think that their worst expert was the appraiser. He, the he has the highest qualification there is, and they can answer nothing. Really, it was terrible. And that's probably what that's probably when it got a little heated with some of them because he didn't have the answers. No, and, and the answers he gave was just sad. On there. But will that will that bend, will that change the outcome? No, um, you know I don't like it when they say that um, when they say that it's going to reduce your taxes because it probably won't mm -hmm. uh, because of the little in lieu of tax, uh, but uh, because of the, bar the values could go up, mm -hmm. and you know there's still costs I mean, to the county. Plus the school in, in there is the school's not going to get anything. The townships don't get anything. Um, I was concerned about Stafford County, though. We were talking about that when you guys were um, That it just seems like we won't, you know, because we always ask why are we left out of this or why are we left out of this different thing. You know, even the transmission line was supposed to go through right. here and that those have been moved and so forth. Um, kind of what I got is they moved those because they put them in a spot like where the wind farm is going to go. Instead of building through here, they're going to, they're just going to go from the wind farm to Wichita or with Goddard and then so forth from there. But it's Quivera. We're too close to birth to, you know, and that's the same problem we had when we went to that water meeting. It's Quivera is the problem with the water. And I was asked to say, I said, you know, the wind farm's pay in lieu of taxes, why we should get some in lieu of federal money because we're losing out. Right. I, you know, I don't know what kind of value we'd be losing. A lot. You know, and, and, and you can't <clears throat> drill, that's, there's a lot of oil up there. And we can't, can we throw that in the equation even? I, I just, so that's your project. <laughs> We need Sounds like they're going to run up to Oregon and join with those guys who are <laughs> taking up uh, taking over the uh, waterfall refuge there. See? Joe can handle this. <laughs> but, I mean, to be to be honest, that's part of our problem. Yeah, I, I think. Is there, am I thinking wrong? Or? No, I just don't know how you can interact it. Take all the federal government. But that's a big problem. It's bigger than what I would have thought. It is. <clears throat> you know, in this water deal, as this heats up, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a major, major issue. I mean, if they, you know, who knows what the answer is going to be, but, you know, if they take 10%, cut every irrigation wall 10% on the on the number, permit number underneath Covira, that's a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and, and physically, that print can't flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the tree damage that's there, uh, it's just, it's a frustrating issue. I mean, it, it really is. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
and especially as mismanaged as Quivira is, that's the upsetting part. You know, you can sit there and watch her at that meeting, you know, and they don't meter the water going out the back side. They don't try to reuse any of that water. They just run it out. Okay. They just, and it floods out everybody when they release it, you know, and that's, that's not right. And it's okay for them to dig out their wetlands and to change their wetlands, but it's not okay for Kurt to do it on his land. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got laws in place, they should follow their own laws too, you know. <clears throat> and I think you're, you know, from talking to both sides, they're hearing both sides of the issue and talking furthermore with both of them. I feel the permit holders have been pretty lenient on with ideas and solutions to this problem and then all of a sudden they change their mind. You know, augmentation all of a sudden is a bad deal. Mm -hmm. Well, why is it a bad deal? Mm -hmm. So where is that at now from that meeting? Do well, they, they, it's in open dis or discussion. It's still in that open window right yeah. now. And, and they moved it even from the 1st of April to the 15th. Mm -hmm. They just did that. Wonderful. And the Secretary of Agriculture, I feel, has been over backwards to work with the permit holders to come up with a solution. Uh, I don't know. But is there any solution? <laughs> well, I think there I mean, is, but it's, it's who's going to fund the solution. You know, that's the that's the that's the million dollar question. You know, there's 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 great solutions out there, but who's going to pay for them? So, is, would one of the solutions be uh, meter going out? Uh, there's, a, I think the, I think the solution, Carl, is up to whatever they, you know, the open comment period is to come up with a solu ideas for solutions for the Department of Ag to, to take those solutions and find the right one and implement it. But it's who's going to pay for it. I mean, that's. I feel the reservoirs look the, the great the best idea with the augmentation of the permits that they've got to augment. I mean, if, if you can build a reservoir to hold the water <coughs> and and hire or elect an official to deem necessary of the impairment of the Vera, here's X amount of water. Is that how Cheyenne Bottom works? I don't know about that. I with all their little... Uh, Reservoirs up there. Yeah. I think they little bit, but they're, they're big. Big. Yeah, but they're not deep. Yeah, they're just. Well, then they put them. in a tube. I mean, they used to use the creek, but now there's a, an aqueduct. Well, so, a great bend. Yeah, because they're losing. They said too much evaporation. Magnets yeah. for miles. They put this huge six-foot concrete culvert underground and buried it. And ever since I was a little kid, it was an open channel that never flowed water. <laughs> There is a lot of evaporation. Well, there is, but I mean, you know, that's that's just a huge waste of money. But I mean, you look what they're doing up in Martin County, and I don't know who paid for that. But why, you know, why are we not being able to fund or figure out who's going to fund this uh, this the solution to this deal with Premier? Mm -hmm. well, state versus that, yeah. Is that what it, there's so Vera is state, state uh, right. Cheyenne Bottom the state, and that's like the uh, the uh, wildlife park. Mm -hmm. Where is Vera? It's federal. federal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so and I don't any know. decisions at Vera has to be ran through the Denver office. You know, nothing can be done locally. Or... But that's what I heard yesterday. They changed their mind on this augmentation deal. Yeah. They did. The people in Denver. But the secretary, you know, her chief water engineer can deem it necessary that augmentation is a solution. And that's, it'll be, I think it'll be a court battle for years, but <coughs> I don't know. I'd, it still will eventually have to be addressed. Yeah. Oh, it's going to get addressed. I mean, there. They're one that implemented by in 2017, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've done what we can do. Okay. You guys have anything else for me? Or?
if you have if you're anything other than me, you will. Oh, yeah. Because that was, that, yeah. that was fun. I knew that one would be a good one. I knew because Randy had some pretty good points. Yes. Yeah. That, was, that was actually pretty, pretty good. And I knew, and like I told Randy, I said, I know if I was involved with the, you know, the wind mm -hmm. energy tax deal. Where did that, whatever happened on that? Did it? Um, the wind storm didn't have too good a lot of uh, They rewrote it, and they actually wrote it incorrect, the legislature. Um, and I called the state yesterday on it, and um, the state doesn't seem like it's a big issue because in the statute, maybe Joe can take care of this, in the statute now how it's written is they talk about a conditional use permit for wind farms and, and or um, the exemption application. Well, in Kansas, wind farms don't get a conditional use permit, they get a special use permit. Uh -huh. And the state act like it wasn't that big a deal, but it actually is when you're talking about zoning because it's two totally paths that you take to get a special use compared to a conditional use. And but I don't think they understand that. You know, and but once again you bring it to their attention and okay. You know, it's not but you know, if we would have did something wrong like that, we'd have had to redo it and everything else, but but um it still falls back on the the wind farmers are voluntarily in the tax, unfortunately. Um, you know, one thing I that when I was at that, that that hearing and so forth, and I've kind of thought this for a long time is, you know, they want the wind farms, they want certain things set back from dwellings or from businesses, this, that, and the other, but yet oil still in Kansas doesn't have to get a permit. And, and where I have a problem with that is, you know, when we built the house south of Great Bend when we moved, um, they were getting ready to drill right right around and there's nothing you can do and you talk about sand, sound you talk about odor you talk about where they put the tank battery there's no zoning and i guess i don't quite understand in today's era why why shouldn't they be zoned also i don't quite get that you know i didn't realize that so there's something else for your the commission <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because, well, well, that's the same way with the yeah. with the wind, though. Yeah, I'd take you know if I were I would take I'd take yeah. two or three towers. Yeah, you know, but then you have the same person right across the road is the head of one, and and they're looking at them and they're being memorized by the red lights at night and everything else, and you can actually hear them hum. I don't know if you've been close enough to them. You, they, they have a little humming to them. But, Joe, why is that? Why, why isn't oil? Why don't they get a permit? Custom and usage. That's the way it started. Yeah, that's the way they've been there. Back in the time. day. Um, under common law, this shocks people. But, uh, under common law, the mineral estate is superior to the surface estate. In other words, if you're on a farm in southern Illinois, which is coal country, and Peabody Coal Company, that's run by my law school roommate, uh, they show up with a big shovel and want to dig up your farm. Tough. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, where it uh, comes into play in Kansas, uh, well, the coal mining that they had in the south East Kansas, also the lead and zinc, but now where it comes into being uh, is uh, the salt mines in Ellsworth and Rice County and lesser extent Reno County. Uh, if if there's a salt mine tunnel underneath your surface estate and it collapses, like happened in Ellsworth County some years back, for those of you on the surface, that's just too bad. Really? Wow. That's worse than your paint battery. Co common law is really strange. As much as we badmouth legislatures in the United States of America, whether it's federal or state level, it'd be much worse under good old English common law.
I don't know why, you know, I, I so, so the oil estate, bring it back to your question, thing. yeah, the oil estate is superior in rights to the surface estate. Okay. See? That There's your answer. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. <coughs> Misty. Okay. Right? <laughs> Common law is full of disturbing rules. Thank you guys. Thanks. Appreciate so. it. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Good morning. Here's what you forgot. Of course. I'd like to request a session for 10 minutes to discuss personnel. Staff. How long? 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. Um, we've got in. I think the motion is to take the session for 10 minutes. We're not allowed to push the file staff. Second. It's been made to say we've got a session for 10 minutes for uh, standing personnel. On the day, say aye. Aye. Do you need me? Well, the counties and cities, what their budget is. Is there anything constitutionally wrong with that? Constitutionally, no. The. Uh, I, I talked to three of them on the committee yesterday, and I told them, I said, to me, it's the same thing as the Supreme Court telling you how much money to spend on schools. And I said, I know how you fight that. Well, and you're trying to tell us what we can spend. The, I'm assuming you shared with them. Yes, they have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's frightening about that is, <clears throat> if that goes in the law, certain counties are, are, are set up for, for bankruptcy. Uh, you get, you know, a lawsuit against you that's in excess of your insurance coverage or worse yet, it's for something that your insurance carrier doesn't insure. Trust me, there's lots of things they don't insure. I, I sit down every year and read the, you know, liability policy. Um, you get a judgment, uh, you pretty much have to, you can't pay it because it's not in your budget, you have to go to an election, which costs what? You need a 25,000 bucks? An election? Yeah. Countywide election? What is that mm, such a bad? About 5,000. Is that all? Oh, it's not well, bad we're at a all. small county. Okay. We only have 2,000 bucks. But in other yeah, words, in May last in other words you'll be running to the county clerk chief election officer to schedule elections. All the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's like, it's almost like a, a town hall meeting taken to the absurd. You guys, even though you're elected, you guys can't make decisions. You got to take financial issues to the ballot, mm -hmm. and which is just ridiculous. It is because they'll never pass. I mean. Well, but you you have, for lack of a better term, downtime when your county is not functioning. Mm -hmm. See. <laughs> This, this nonsense of putting a cap on how much you can increase revenue only works if your valuation is expanding each year. Now that's true of certain counties, but the vast majority of counties out in western Kansas, the very opposite is true. I, I was, my, my favorite poster child for, you know, a county that's teetering on the edge of bankruptcy is Smith County. Carl Miller and I, you know, get to get, we, we actually get along pretty well. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we get together and we look at, you know, finances in other counties and we just shake our heads. The mill levy in Smith County is 273. Yeah. I mean, wow. that's, they, they had a couple of older factories basically bail, you know, the, the building was depreciated out over 27 and a half years and they packed up and moved elsewhere. And with that came a loss in jobs, which means pe people left you. Yeah. Some of those towns up there on 36 Highway are kind of frightening, like Mankato, I mean, that's like a ghost town. Um, and uh, that's what's happening in Smith Center. And uh, so 
so they don't have a tax base. You just got to keep raising the mill levy to provide basic services. And of course, what's the first thing that's going to happen when a county doesn't have money? It's called road and bridge cuts, because that's the bulk of your budget. I think it's a liability issue too. I mean, if you can't raise the money to go put out a stop sign and somebody runs through a well okay. intersection and gets killed, okay. it's okay. going to be liable for okay. that. Of necessity, the first thing that I you know would recommend in a revenue shortfall is a lot of roads get declared minimum maintenance roads. here for a mile of blacktop it was like a million dollars so for putting new for new yeah, blacktop yeah, it was an overlay and for new it was a mil like a million dollars it's i'm old enough to remember when they finally built a an all-weather road that was at telluride colorado they called that the million dollar mile and everybody was aghast of course that was like 1959 or 1960. Yeah. Well, Les Donovan is the chairman of that, and he is not too enthused about the bill. But I still think it'll go in in 2018, which is not good either. But. Well, well one, one thing that uh, that would uh, give the county is an opportunity to yeah. raise Damn, your, right. your base revenue stream because. It's not, a, it's not a popular move to increase the mill levy, but if the price of oil keeps doing this on you. I'm just full of good news. <laughs> yes, you sure. are. Well, but, but actually, I, I, I get on my little computer, yes, I... Do you know how to use a computer? I just don't drag one around with me because I think it's ostentatious, and I just feel comfortable with paper. As you can see here, I'm, I'm able to talk to you guys and think and shuffle paper at the same time. And if, if, if with the computer, the computer gets 110 percent of my attention. Uh, the uh, particularly with the touch screen, I, you know, I have problems with those. We won't go there. But, uh, no, the uh, uh, problem uh, right now in the state of Kansas is the state's going bankrupt, but they just won't admit it. You know, county commissioners tend to be a lot more honest in, in their assessment of the situation. The state of Kansas has taken all the money from KDOT, so KDOT has no reserve left. The state's going, oh, we can issue bonds if we need to fix a road. And I'm like, yeah, with your B-minus bond rating? <laughs> well, I also got invited to testify in, in front of the Assessments and Taxation Committee. I told them so one of us would probably be up there. The uh, other thing I've noticed the state of Kansas is doing is they are trying to balance their budget using traffic court. You know, our traffic filings here last year was increased over 100%. Same thing in Ellsworth County. I, I, I'm not a big believer in coincidence. You see, with traffic <laughs> cases, all the money goes to Topeka. None of it's yeah. local. And uh, also I've noticed that instead of like one or two violations on a ticket, now it's averaging between four and six. Oh yeah, they're, they're trying to mine these traffic cases. And uh, they've got so bad in Ellsworth County, I actually went out and hired part-time prosecutors to handle the traffic crap. And the, the, the thing is, of the other 10 attorneys in Ellsworth who are busy signing off on my nominating petition, uh, they don't, you know, they're making sufficient money, they aren't gonna come work for me. So I got somebody out of McPherson who's part-time part uh, with the McPherson County Attorney's Office, always you know, one day a week with me, handling traffic stuff. But 
all this traffic stuff is filed by you know laptop computer from police cars. There's no paper anymore. Uh, so when the clerk of court gets it, she'll just in turn email it to my assistant, Kurt Colley, at his office in McPherson. He'll come up to Ellsworth, you know, one day a week and handle the three thousand plus traffic cases we have over the course of a year. <coughs> My secretary, Linda, and myself, we were like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, we actually have like serious crimes to prosecute. I'm raising money for the state of Kansas. But they don't want to pay for it. Okay. Um, you can talk to him about that agreement with uh, Rose Valley? Yes. Or if you want Philip. Is that other yeah, main Philip? Philip just kind of gives yeah. him an idea. <clears throat> Philip was going to talk to him. Yeah. Philip oh, okay. couldn't get you. Okay, I'll get a hold of Phil. Okay. And, uh, and the terms of services. And yeah. yeah, here's here's. Should here's you have one drawn up for St. John Township too, just for the services? I think we do, don't we? Uh -uh. I don't think we do. Here, here, here's the ticket, real quick. Here's the ticket format I'm talking about. We have six, and this ticket is going to generate for. Assuming there's a conviction, this ticket is going to generate for the state of Kansas four hundred ninety-eight dollars. You know, it's like you don't get out of traffic court these days without dropping a couple hundred dollars. Assuming the prosecutor is there to you know, prosecute the case, etc. You know, officer shows up in response to subpoenas. Um, I got sucked into a case. It's probably not going to be a case because I know these people because I put them all in prison. But we got another drug overdose in, in Ellsworth County, kind of the town of Wilson. But the coroner in Hayes, or the, uh, not the coroner, the uh, uh, pathologist in Hayes, gives me a call and says, Joe, we got a problem. I go, what do you mean? It's just another dead drugger. Yeah, but the drugger's been dead for three or four days. And you said, the police report said it, it was a house that was occupied with other people present. <laughs> So I had the KBI come in, and uh, oh, uh, but I'm sure they're not going to get anywhere with these. These people are hardcore druggers. But I like that. You know, somebody up and falls out on you, to use a slang term. And, oh, three days, four days. I have moved. I suppose we better call 911. <laughs> that gives you an idea of the extent of the drug problem in rural Kansas. We tend to have more overdoses in Ellsworth County than a lot of similar uh, similar counties in terms of demographics. We've got to figure that out. Uh, the uh, amazing thing is people go back and forth between stimulants such as methamphetamine and I guess you'd call things that depress your system like opioids. And I thought people would have, you know, benefited from the example of John Belushi. You do that, you don't last long. Well, it's, it's just amazing uh, how the KBI has re- Districted Kansas. For many, for first of all, Stafford County, you're still safe here because you get the KBI out of Great Bend, you know, 30 some miles up the road. For many years, Ellsworth County was serviced by the Great Bend office, but not anymore. Ellsworth County is now part of the northeastern Kansas quadrant. <laughs> and guess where our KBI agents come from? Kansas City. Manhattan. 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 Wow. Five, two hours away. You know, when you go into Manhattan, uh, you can go on Seth Child Road on the left side, you got the big barbecue place, and across the way, you got the big law enforcement. So yeah. the KBI has offices uh, there. I, I don't mind. I, I like some of the KBI agents from Manhattan, but the thing is, it's an hour and a half away, one way. So you better have a dead body to get him to come on out. 
And then when they were out there, I said, okay, now you can help me with the, the child sex crime cases I have backed up here where the Ellsworth County Sheriff's Office is not being very proactive. You know, these people aren't in custody. They, they haven't lawyered up, and I'm aware of them. They can run at them. The worst they can do is refuse to talk to you or refer you to their attorney, but at least make a run at them. Yeah, anything else, Shane? I don't. All right. I'll send you a pen pen. Go ahead, Jeremy.